Uh, so good morning, everyone. Uh, a couple things I want to address right off the bat. First of all, I know it's kind of got dark in here, but I know I have cat ears on my head. Um, this is a new tradition that um, my daughter started who comes to conferences with me and is actually right back there. Um, so I'm wearing them for her and me because they look good. Um, I was informed this morning that I was only allowed to wear the cat ears now in my talks if I mention her in the talk. So duty done, credit where it's due. Um, the second thing I want to address right off the top of the top of things is that I don't think that my top talk topic was available before now. So um, I'm going to be talking this morning about how to not be an expert. And I realize that may be a little bit of a dismaying prospect. You got up uh, early, it's raining, it's kind of gross outside, and you're here for the morning keynote of the second day of the conference, which is always a little rough. Um, and now you're faced with somebody who is talking about seemingly not knowing what she's talking about. Um, so I get that. It's okay, though. I'm going to explain everything, and we're going to get through it, and I think you may like it at the end. I hope so. I've been thinking a lot about this idea of, of experts um, in our software web industry. Uh, the idea of, like, wh what is an expert? How do we get to be an expert? And then in this getting to be an expert, that means, well, what are we learning and what are we teaching? And also, more importantly, this idea of what are the goals and ideals that we are setting up as experts, that we are sharing with the people around us and setting up as our, as our own aspirations. Um, what does all of that mean? I have questions about all of that, obviously. Um, the first one that I start out with is this idea, okay, what, what is an expert? When we say expert, what do we mean by that? I feel like everybody has their own definitions. Sometimes it's the person who gets to get up and give talks, or the person who's written a lot of books, um, person who has lots of degrees, and these are all, you know, worthy accomplishments, but it's kind of hard to understand for me personally, what does that mean about an expert, and how do, how do people get there? Um, when I started thinking about this, I started thinking about, well, how, how do you get to be an expert? Who, who gets to decide that? Is there a, like, a council of wise elders that hands out expert labels for people? Or is it after you have given a certain amount of talks, you are automatically an expert, and then you're an expert from then on into the future, into eternity? Um, I don't know. I'm not sure. Maybe these metrics exist out there, and I just don't, or I'm just not aware of them. But I started to look around and see, like, well, do we have metrics for this sort of thing? Do we have some rules? Um, some of the first ones I found, that they weren't too promising. Um, this is one of the first things I found. If you can't see this or you may be unaware, these are my LinkedIn endorsements. Um, these <laughs> um, at the top, you'll see I have been endorsed most for CSS, which makes sense. I do that a lot. I like it. It's good times. Um, my second endorsement, however, is for Batman, which I have definitely promoted. Um, and I like the fact that I seem to be an expert in Batman as my, my second level. Thank you. Um, at the bottom, the, I have, you know, there's other skills in there, too. I've got WordPress. I used to do a lot of WordPress theme development. I don't do that anymore. But it's still on my list because people endorse me for it. Um, I also have fire breathing on this list, which I have never done so far. Um, the point of this, and if you have a LinkedIn profile and you get endorsements, and not to uh, dismiss at all the lovely people who want to give me credit for, for skills that they think I'm good in, but there isn't a whole lot of checks on this. You can just go endorse people on LinkedIn, obviously. Like, there, there isn't a test to s make sure that I actually am an expert in Batman. I am, but a lot of the people who are endorsing me on LinkedIn don't necessarily know that. Uh, so, an interesting thing happened to me recently where I got an email from somebody who wanted me to um, contribute a, a, an article or something for their blog on a certain topic. They were talking to many experts and wanted to get some content um, to teach people how to do a certain thing. And he literally went to my LinkedIn profile and looked at my list of skills and sent me an email. And it says, I, it see, says in your LinkedIn endorsements that you're really good at WordPress, so would you write something about WordPress for us? Um, I was like, I haven't touched WordPress in about five years. So um, I could, but it wouldn't be all that particularly useful for you. So I learned that this is actually a metric that people do to decide um, who are experts in certain things. Um, again, it could be a, a useful supplement. Um, it could be a really nice supplement to you know, how you think about yourself and all the good stuff you do. Um, but nobody has ever come to me and asked for my opinions on Batman. So. I don't know. The whole thing seems a little, a little strange to me. So I'm not sure if I trust this as a system to really determine who is the best in things or not. 
Another thing I found is something like this you may have seen on portfolios. Has anybody seen anything like this to describe certain skills? Um, this is a screenshot from somebody who I think has more designery type skills. If you read this closely later on in the slides, you'll notice that <laughs> this is actually from a parody site called The Worst Portfolio Ever. And <laughs> so it's making the point here that there's a list of skills and then a bar that indicates how much of this skill this person has. For example, they have 100% of skills in Photoshop. What that means, nobody really knows, but it's up there in a graph, so there must be something to it. Um, there's also 50% of logo design, so okay, that's there. Um, I see this a lot, and it's really hard to kind of decide, well, well what, what, does, what does this really mean, though? Is there a finite amount of you know, HTML and CSS that, that exists in the world, and I know 35% of it? What do I have to do to get to 100? How do I know when I get to 100%? Is that when I get a certificate or something? Is that when I'm expert in HTML and CSS? Um, I don't know. So my point with all of this is that we have the system in place to determine how good we are at certain things and who is worth listening to about certain things. But we may not always know exactly why. Um, can we trust a system like this? Um, is there anything else that's better for that? How do we measure people? The metrics that we use, um, we talk about ninjas or rock stars, but how do we me measure ninjiness or rock starness? Um, can we trust the system to do that? And if we can't trust the system to give us credible experts, can we really trust these experts? And can we trust our own journeys in wanting to become experts ourselves? So this sounds a little dim, maybe. But when I started to realize this idea that maybe the system in place for determining experts may not be all that we want it to be or it could be, it actually was very freeing to me. Because the thing about me is that I don't tend to really trust systems very much. Um, I have issues with authority. It's one of those things. So when I started thinking that maybe this unquestioned authority in place that make experts wasn't the end all of things, it opened up a lot more possibilities for me. So this is one of the first people that ever taught me about questioning systems. If you don't know who this is, this is a man named Joe Strummer. He was in a band called The Clash. If those are unfamiliar names to you, you have some very important homework to do after this. Um, he was one of my first heroes, and he was one of my first heroes because he taught me how to question systems. He has a quote that says, authority is supposedly grounded in wisdom, but I could see from an early age that authority was only a system of control and didn't have any inherent wisdom. I quickly realized that you either became a power or you were crushed. Which, it gets a little depressing at the end, I know. But there's a flip side to this, is what I just said, that once you realize that a system in place can be questioned, can be improved, and that the individuals within it have these opportunities to do that questioning and do that improving. Um, and the individuals have the power to remake a structure, um, to become trustworthy experts and not just following a same pattern. Um, that's really cool, actually, this idea that, oh, hey, maybe the system doesn't make a whole lot of sense or we're not quite sure how we're elevating people to these spots or how I get to that spot myself, but there's this opportunity here to think about better ways of doing that, thinking about what we value and how we can put new values into the world. So the way that, next thing I came to with that, how are we making experts? How do we do this? And really what that is, is called education. So education is something I've been interested in for a long time, especially this um, tech education, mainly because my own personal tech education really, really sucked. Um, mostly in the sense that I didn't have one. Um, I grew up out in rural Ohio, didn't have access to internet or, or computers until I really was into college. Um, jumped into a computer science degree where I was the only female computer science major in my entire class. Um, and basically just had a really difficult time learning things. Uh, I felt the environment was really hostile. Um, it was really difficult for me to kind of figure out a way in and to think of things in the, the way that worked for me personally. Um, it just was all pretty awful. It's taken me long years to try to figure out ways to learn the things that I want to learn and get better at the things that I want to uh, get better at. 
Um, so I've been involved in education in this field for a while now just because of that impetus. Like, I want to make it better for other people. Uh, a few years ago, I started working with an organization called Girl Develop It that offers introductory programming classes for women. I founded a chapter in Columbus and then moved on to Chicago where I was helping Girl Develop It in Chicago. I also taught at a coding school for about a year and a half. So I spent a lot of time in this realm of education thinking about how we're bringing people in here. And also, it made me think, too, how we are helping people already in the field continuing to learn. And one of the most important things that I, came, I started to realize is that we don't have an environment that really encourages open learning. We tend to have an environment that really values people being an expert in things. And if you're not an expert in things, you can often be shamed for not being an expert in things. And that prevents people from learning. And so, we kind of have this cycle in place where, again, we have these nebulous experts who are the only ones who are allowed to talk about things, but we don't really know um, how to get other people there because people don't know how to learn things. It just seemed very strange and inefficient, to say the least. Um, so I have another quote from another person who's very important to me. This is a woman named Kathleen Hanna. She was in a band called Bikini Pill. Some more homework for you. Um, but she, it, her work was in the feminist punk scene, and she had a very do-it-yourself message. Where she said, you don't necessarily have to have talent. You can just get up and do something and see where it takes you. I always tell girls who say they want to start a band but don't have any talent, well, neither do I. I mean, I can carry a tune, but anybody who picks up a bass can figure it out. You don't have to have magic unicorn powers. This is true for basically anything. Actually, yeah, I'll go ahead and say anything. Um, that doesn't mean that you can immediately just pick up something and be amazing at it. Like, you're going to need some time and practice to learn how to be a surgeon. You should, you know, put some time and effort into that. Um, but anybody can start out on that path. It's okay. And it's okay when you come in there that you don't know in the beginning because that's how it works and that's, that's all right. Um, the path of how you move along the, from not knowing anything to knowing something is what we want to talk about. So what I've learned in education so far are a few things about how to create an environment where people feel empowered to keep learning. One of the first things I learned about that is that unlearning old expectations is way more difficult and way more terrifying than learning something new. So as we're thinking about bringing new people into our field and teaching them how to move along a path to expertise, Something important to keep in mind is that this isn't necessarily about just teaching people new things. This also goes for us individually when we want to grow in our own careers. It's very important to keep in mind that if you want to learn a new language or any sort of new technology or level up in what you already know, your main barrier is probably not going to be just getting information about that thing. There are books, we have great conferences, communities, things like that. It's all available to you. Uh, but unlearning old expectations about what you're supposed to do and be and how you're supposed to take that information in can sometimes be more of a barrier than anything else can be. Um, I don't think that we need to necessarily turn out people who are confident in what they're doing from day one and move on from there. I think it's okay to be uncomfortable in the beginning about what you're learning and what you're embarking on. And we should be teaching people that it's okay. You can be comfortable. You can be uncomfortable. You can be wrong about things. You can start off down a path, and it cannot make sense. Um, this expectation that we always have to be right about things, otherwise we don't have a right to speak up, is more is holding more people back from learning and growing than not having access to information is. So the other thing that, about this is that there's also a lot of things out there that we don't know we need to learn. And if we never let go of our expectations of what it is that we want to get to, then we don't discover those new things. And this could be anything from, again, a very particular technical thing. It could be a, a larger human thing, learning about how to learn, that sort of thing. And this goes right along in the same vein, is that education is really about teaching people to get out of their own ways. And all of these things that I'm talking about education, I'm not just saying that, some, that like if you're going to teach a beginner, this is all about teaching ourselves, too. So we want to make sure that we have our, an environment in place where you know that you can unlearn these old things, you can let go of these expectations that you had in there. You can feel free to discover and explore and be wrong and make all sorts of mistakes, and you're not going to be derided as somebody who doesn't know what they're doing because you're just going to be on a path of exploration just like everybody else. 
this is another thing that I learned about education. It's not necessarily a new idea, but uh, the idea that if you teach someone a thing, she'll know a thing. Or if you can teach her to learn, then she can learn anything. This is probably the most important thing that I've learned about education, is this idea that when we talk about education, we're not just teaching people how to do things or how to um, be familiar with this one particular language, one particular technology, whatever it is. We're teaching people to go through our problem solving and thinking process. If you focus on learning that or teaching that, then you've opened up so many more avenues um, for exploration than you would have if you just taught the one thing. Um, so again, an old idea, but something that we should always keep in mind. And sometimes, again, this is harder to keep in mind when we're talking about ourselves. Um, so next time you want to learn something new, it may not be just picking up something, a new book. It may be examining your problem solving process and like how you can explore that too. I've heard lots of people, and this is something that happens in these communities of people who want to learn new things. Um, I've heard lots of speakers before to tell conferences that if you are a programmer that really wants to level up and learn something new, don't go learn a new language. Go read a psychology book. Go read something that's outside of the field, because it's going to expand your viewpoint. And it's also going to expand the way you take in information and how you're thinking about problems. So I talked a little bit about my utopia of education, this place where we're all thinking about how exploring and making mistakes and being supported in that, and everything is great and happy and beautiful and it's fantastic, and we're all experts in Batman, and everything's great. The problem is that you can create these little bubbles, you can do this for yourself, you can do this in smaller groups, and yet at some point, you all have to go back out into the world, and now you're back out into that system that we started with, where the metrics are confusing to decide who you can trust with information, where you may be judged because you're not an expert in something, um, all of these things that are kind of confusing and may not represent the values that we held in our little bubble of um, real good education. It's one thing to be a beginner at the beginning. A lot of us will accept that. You know, I'm just starting out. I'm just, just learning this type of thing. But it's a lot harder to keep a beginner's mind when you're no longer a beginner when you're farther down the path, but you still need to grow and you still need to learn. And it's very easy to lapse out of those habits of continuing to learn. When we get put into a system that gives us jobs or um, gives us titles or anything based on our expert status, it's very difficult to say, well, wait, I don't want to be an expert. Uh, and when I say that, as we, t we talk about this idea of maybe an anti-expert, that doesn't mean that we need to um, deprecate or deride skills or having expertise. I think that's a great thing. We should always be learning, we should always be getting new skills, and we should be owning that. If you're good at something, that's awesome. Talk about it. You talk about how good you are at it. I think that's separate, though, from this idea of what is a capital E expert and how we distribute respect and skill um, as experts in our community. And the main thing that I think about this is because the way that we treat experts and we define experts determines what people think they have to be as they're growing into this industry. So this, I have another quote for you. This is a long one, I apologize, and it may be difficult to, to see, but I will read it. Like most of the others, I was a seeker, a mover, a malcontent, and at times, a stupid hellraiser. I was never idle long enough to do much thinking, but I felt somehow my instincts were right. I shared a vagrant optimism that some of us were making real progress, that we had taken an honest road, that the best of us would inevitably make it over the top. At the same time, I shared a dark suspicion that the life we were leading was a lost cause, that we are all actors, kidding ourselves along a senseless odyssey. It was a tension between these two poles, a restless idealism on one hand and a sense of impending doom on the other that kept me going. I know that's really depressing now. But let me unpack that a bit. So this is a quote from Hunter S. Thompson. He's not talking about the tech industry at all. But this is sometimes what I feel about the tech industry, that I don't know what we're moving towards. And I don't know if what we are moving towards and our heroes, our ideals, the goals that we set for other people coming in represent the type of thing that I value. I mentioned before that I have a daughter. 
Um, I'm a single mom, so she comes to me with a lot of conferences. She comes to me to a lot of classes and work and all of that stuff, and she sees this industry. Um, she has no idea <laughs> that she's used to going to classes where I teach a whole bunch of women how to program. She has no idea that that's an unusual thing sometimes or what my own educational experience was like. Um, when I think about the representatives that we have in our industry of the experts, they don't really look like her usually. Um, and there's lots of other people that I know that are really knowledgeable or doing really important things that don't always seem to be represented. Um, sometimes I worry that our idea of our expert has been tied to the system that it's in. Um, what, and what happens when that, <laughs> that happens? If our experts are tied to the system that we're not questioning, then our experts could maybe end up being these people who, they are very good in one thing, but m if they're, they all seem to have certain characteristics that are apart from them being good in that one thing. That gets tied into the idea of experts. And then our idea of expert becomes somebody who has all those characteristics, whether they're good in that thing or not. Um, and the idea of an expert can get blown up into this thing that's totally separate from, from merit or completely separate from um, what they are actually doing in terms of what they look like, what they, what, do they fit that profile? Well, you don't look like an expert. What does an expert look like? Um, these are all questions that can kind of grow without us paying attention to them. I worry that we have an idea of an expert that is somebody who is just completely apart from the system is actually a product of the system. In education, I've been in the last year or so, I've actually had some young men enter the industry and say verbatim that their goal was to be like the guy in the social network, which is not a good thing, by the way. <laughs> I want to make that clear. Um, but these are some of our representatives that we have out there. There's a lot of people who are drawn to the idea of an expert as somebody who knows everything about everything, is un untouchable. Um, they don't tend to have a lot of empathy for the people around them. They don't tend to be really good working in teams or communities or things like that. But they are experts and they know everything about these things and so they are infallible. And people are attracted to that. But I think that's a really dangerous expert to have. And I think questioning this idea of what is that model and who fits that model and what is the system that is feeding into that model, something that we really, really need to do. Because if we don't, the people who fit that model before they even have done any of the work or learning about things are always going to be treated a little bit more like, like the es experts. And people who don't fit that model, no matter what they do or know, are not going to be treated like experts. And we have, we have a system that's out of balance. And we all end up losing out of this because really it's just not a trustworthy system, essentially. So what do we do about this? So what, we, what I think we need to do is we need to really think about the system that we're working in and how it, sh it represents our values. Mine, for example, when I think about experts, I'm far more interested in thinking about experts of people who are questioners and people who are explorers and learners and beginners and fuck-ups and risk-takers and punks and rebels with causes. The people who are out there exploring and pushing and creating an environment where other people can do those sort of things, I think deserve to be the ones that we are holding up as our ideal as the expert of the people that we want to get to be like. You can know things, but remind, as you go through the journey, Remind yourself what it's like to learn new things. And sometimes this takes a little bit of effort. Um, this past summer, I decided to do this myself. And I decided to take a class in something that I had never done before. And I took a trapeze class. And it was terrifying. But it was a really good reminder of what it's like to put yourself in a situation that you're not quite sure how it's going to go and to literally take a little bit of a leap of faith into learning how to do something new. If it's been a really long time since you've learned something new, you might have forgotten what it feels like to do that. Um, and it's going, to be, it's going to be scary no matter what. I'm not necessarily afraid of heights, um, but I'm a human being, and most human beings have something in the back of their minds that like, oh, you know, you shouldn't jump off a platform that's 50 feet in the air. So when I actually did that, even with the harness, all that, all that stuff, it was still very terrifying. But I did it. And I still remember that now that not only the fear inherent in doing it, but what it felt like to know, okay, I just did something that I had never done before and now I have this little bit of knowledge and I have that. 
that helps me when I need to go learn something else. That helps me when I'm teaching other people. That helps me when I'm part of a community to understand what it's like that there are maybe a lot of other people who are jumping off their platforms too. Um, we need a net underneath for all of us, and we're all responsible for making that net for people. The more that we can continue to learn ourselves, the more we can encourage other people to do this. The more that we can teach people how to learn on their own and be supportive of their own journeys, the better we're gonna be able to set up our ideals and values to represent what we really want our community to be like. So while we may have a not have a system in place that makes a lot of sense right now of absolutely rewarding expertise and value in the way it should be, we can make that. We can do this in very small bits by thinking about how we're learning in the world and how we're supporting the people around us. And eventually we can create this net that people are going to be able to do in. And it can be very small. You don't have to go out and change a whole educational system. You don't need to go and uh, try to start from elementary school or universities, because we're not going to be able to change that all, all at once. But what we can do is do little bits here and there. Maybe it's something you just do for yourself. Maybe it's you just go out and sign up for a trapeze class to remember what it's like to learn new things and remember what it's like to be able to have somebody to catch you there when, you're, when you are learning them. Um, or maybe you decide to mentor somebody else at your workplace. Or maybe you just have a conversation with somebody at this conference about what you can do to create a better environment for people to stretch and learn. But the main thing is, is that we should always be questioning the goals that we're going for. Nece be learning in this industry isn't necessarily, you came in as a beginner, you start at this one point, and you're going to move along this clear, linear path, and at the end you're going to be an expert, and then you don't need to learn anymore. That is not the way it should be working. We're all going to be losing out if we don't follow other paths and bring other people in to follow those paths with us. So my message with this that I want to leave you is this idea of let's be comfortable with not being experts. Let's be comfortable with being perpetual beginners. Let's be comfortable with uh, celebrating those people who are still questioning and still taking risks and not necessarily staying in comfort zones because we're never really going to be able to move forward with all of the things that we can do in this industry, which is considerable. We can accomplish a lot. But we're going to be able to accomplish a lot more if we're doing it all moving forward in an ex way of exploration. And that's all I have for you.